So the impact from these fish nets, one of the major ones actually where they're indiscriminate where they throw them as well. They're indiscriminate catches, but they're also indiscriminate in their location. Now they're not as excessively damaging as a large trawl net, um, but the local fishermen can't get away with that within a marine park um, boundary. The one big problem with these is that because they are so indiscriminate on the reef, they can pull a lot of reef fish over to actually get inside the trap and a lot of benthic invertebrates such as hermit crabs that would not be caught in a standard gill net or something like that along the reef because they're actually reef dwelling fish. Now if you remove these from the environment, what are their general purposes in the, the ecology or the ecosystem of the reef is to clean, they're a part of them. a lot of them are algae bores, so they, they specifically clean algae off surfaces which allows coral settlement and coral growth. Some are coralivores, so they actually eat sections of the coral which allows for renewal of the coral accession and also develops coral immunity so they, they keep the system rolling. And the big ones of these are the um, rabbit fish, the butterfly fish, to a degree the parrotfish as well and they will all just move into the traps. You see a lot of these traps they're full of huge schools of a surgeon fish as well actually, a classic algal, that just move in schools and they catch the entire school and yank it off the reef. Now that removal from the system will then with high nutrient uh, loading, which somewhere like Koh Tao will have with the, the amount of humans living on the island, cause potentially an increase in algal growth, which means that the, algal, uh, the coral settlement thereafter won't be as high, and you'll start having a degradation of the reef. You'll start seeing algal development more and more and more. And once it's set a foothold, then the coral finds it very, very hard to get in, break into the system. The removal of like, the benthic invertebrates as well, these are detritivores, they clean the reef, they clean all the, uh, the material that's sort of lying on the bottom and underneath allow that to recycle into the system and that nutrient recycling into the actual coral reef system and they're absolutely worthless to to the fishermen they just catch them anyway occasionally you get large pelagic sometimes you see cobia or um, larger schools of things like batfish which do have an important place um, on the reef but because they're more pelagic species they would have been caught by by nets anyway the real impact is the smaller fish, the little butterfly fish, the um, surgeon fish, those coral associated or benthos associated schools that would not actually have been removed otherwise. It just shows that Kotaro is just like the small example of planet Earth in general. We do have more and more problems with drinking water all around the world as well, with clean clean water in this case. And but yes, we, we do inhabit more and more land, so we do cut more rainforest down, and we, we're devastating our planet right now, and we don't slow down. Even if we talk smartly about it in television, there's no action really done, right? So the coral reefs, scientists reckon in this case, we're gonna lose 70% of that in the next 30 years. And uh, for people like me living from the ocean, and, and really, Appreciating the beauty of the water as well, it's, it's devastating to hear those news. You can talk about your car, you can talk about your BMW, you can talk about your 15 bedroom house mansion, you can talk about your gold, your jewels, your boob job, whatever you're doing with your life. What people are missing in the first world, and I think this is also what gives people on Kotao a very unique insight into some of the truths that have to be said. We all come from that first world and we respect it and we love it and we love our family. But what people in the first world miss is the way the human race at the moment is treating our planet is nothing short of the general whole story is an unpriced, unchecked sewer. If we don't slow it down, we're going to have a very bleak right, future ahead of us in our lifetime, right? And sure, then the generations after following us, I mean, they're going to say, hey, if you knew all that, why, why you didn't do anything about that? Now our planet is wrecked, it's not to repair anymore, right? And then you can go on with all the other stuff, deep sea trawling, dynamite fishing, general pollution. The darkest of all, for me, shark finning. Next to drugs, shark finning is the darkest, most twisted, most greed-driven, evil, it has to be said, it can't be polite on this one evil, rancid, dark, twisted, most incorrect way human beings treat this earth. And again, why I say this is because the people on Kotal that do this have that insight 
because they've dove with the whale shark, they've dove with the great reef shark. To then watch shark water, for an example, and see a whale shark chopped up for $10,000 for its tail, the, the lump you get in your chest here, and anyone watching this knows me, it, 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 it's tearing you out from inside. It, it's pulling everything out from inside of you. And you cannot imagine the human beings do this to such a magnificent creature. And again, short history lesson. 450 million years sharks have been here, 125 million years longer than the dinosaurs, survived five major extinctions. We know what? My man, architects of the world we live in today. There's no discussion or debate. You don't have to be a historian or a great person who studied paleontology, but if you read just a tad about sharks and understand what they've done for this planet, I don't think anyone would even allow another shark to even be killed. But if something doesn't break there, something stop here, this is another catastrophe just waiting to happen, along with all the other stuff. And I don't know all the answers, but I do know that it's full circle. Again, linking to all the stuff we spoke a little bit earlier about, the uniqueness of living here. It's a unique opportunity for people like us to be able to give these stories and these experiences, coming from the first world, to the people that come to Kota and have a holiday and do a dive course. Yeah, I hope I'm not one of those people who has to say, I didn't do anything about it, right? I will do at least my small part I can do, right? By spreading awareness, participating on certain projects as well in the future, right?